The Department of Public Works is holding an all-staff meeting. Barnstable police are warning residents about a new scam, and we learn more about the Barnstable Village Christmas Stroll. All of that on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Tuesday, December 6, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. The Department of Public Works is hosting its third all-hands-on-deck meeting tomorrow morning at Town Hall. DPW Director Dan Santos says it's a great opportunity to get all of the staff in one room. And uh, it's basically a half a day meeting and, uh, and it's an opportunity uh, for uh, the leadership and myself to, to talk to all the employees and um, uh, we introduce employees that are new to the department and we recognize those that have retired over the last year. Um, we take a department photo, uh, which we've gotten a nice collection now on our wall. Uh, and then I'll brief them on kind of uh, what I see as the direction of the department in the next year and couple of years. And then we have briefings by a number of people uh, in our management group here on a variety of topics. And this year we'll We'll, we'll have a um, presentation on snow and ice. Santos says the group will also meet the department's new safety officer and we'll hear from town manager Mark Ells as well. Barnstable police are warning residents to watch out for a new scam. To learn more, I talked with Chief of Police Paul McDonald. Very busy over there during the holiday season. What can you tell me about a new scam uh, that's coming that's coming around? So there's a new scam out there that we haven't seen in a number of years, probably going back six to eight years, but it's called skimming. Um, and what's going on, the first case reported to us, is an ATM machine. What they do is they have these um, little machines that go on top of the ATMs, actually covers the front where you put your card in um, to make either a withdrawal or deposit. And it looks just like the ATM machine. It does not affect the operation of the ATM machine. And once you scan your card through, this machine reads the back of the card and takes all your personal information off of it. And what they do is they leave the machines on the ATM for a couple of, couple of hours. They go back and they take them off. They read it, then they make these false cards, then they go out, go out and use them. Now, we haven't seen this done up here um, in a number of years, and right now we've had three reported incidents, um, one in Hyannis, um, one in Dennis, and one in Orleans. Um, right now, the ATM machine that was used here it was at the Cape Cod 5 at the intersection of Bounce Road and Winter Street. Now, a number of years, we had the exact same problem before, but it was done at a couple of gas stations along West Main Street. Um, that was a little bit different um, because we believe that was somewhat of an inside job, uh, possibly somebody connected connected with the establishment, but this is totally different. Um, people really, really have to be aware of it, and unless you're really cognizant of what's going on and you're aware of it, you know, you, you, you're going to fall prey to this. And what you have to do is when you look at these machines, you have to look at the front of them and make sure everything looks the way it should look, because most of these are just connected with a strong magnet or sometimes even Velcro. So if something looks loose or if you can move it, um, I simply would not use the ATM machine and contact the bank immediately. Yes, yeah, so it's such a scary thing to think about. Um, I don't know that I would even notice if something was, was up. So I think that's what makes it really tricky, especially if they put it on something as reputable as a Cape Cod 5. I think initially I was going to ask you, you know, what type of ATMs were tar being targeted, but it sounds like any ATM can be targeted. If you look at this, and if you are not accustomed to seeing these things, you would never know it's there. Um, you simply scan your card through like you would ordinarily. Um, it does not even affect the, affect the operation of the machine. If you're making a deposit, if you're making a withdrawal, everything will go through as it should normally. But because of it's there, because of this little other machine that's attached to it, it reads the back of the magnetic strip and takes all your information off it. You know, we've only had uh, one incident. Um, and the person did lose a significant amount of money, um, but we are looking into it. We, we have personally gone out and checked most of the ATM machines in town. We have not found another one. Yeah, so definitely if you see something that looks suspicious, give a call, report that uh, both to the bank as well as to, to the authorities. They're almost never 
attached uh, with screws. You know, they're usually attached with a, uh, some type of very strong, a significant magnet or Velcro. So if you see anything like that or if you touch it and it moves or you can pull it off, notify the bag and notify the police immediately. You know, how did they become aware or how did you guys become aware of the incidents here locally, uh, one in Hyannis and I think you said one in Dennis? Right. We were, no we, we were notified by the bank um, a couple of weeks after it happened. The individual who it happened to didn't know until they got their bank statement and they saw the money being withdrawn and they go back and find out. And of course, every ATM has video attached to it so then they do it and we have uh, excellent video of the possible suspect. Wonderful. Do you think there, I mean, did you get a good shot of the suspect? Is it we have multiple we, we have multiple shots of the individual. The problem is we just have to identify most of the individuals are transient. They, they travel across the country or they travel across a region of a country. They come here for a couple of days, they use machines, they get whatever they can and then they leave. It's crazy to think about what people can accomplish in the digital age. Thank you so much for telling us about that scam. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the strolls. I know yep. that police officers are, are around for those events. Uh, there were two or three strolls held over the weekend. Right. How there, did those go? There were three strolls this past weekend, the Centerville, Hyannis, and the Masters Mills. Um, the Centerville stroll, of course, it, it included road closures on Main Street, Centerville, Four Corners, um, up to Bumps River and Old Stage Road intersection. That whole area was closed down. Hyannis had their stroll, which started at 9.30 in the morning with uh, breakfast with Santa at uh, the British Beer Company, and that ran till 3 o'clock. And then after that, they had the boat parade down at uh, Bismo Park. Moss and Mills had their parade on Sunday, and then the next two ones are coming up on tomorrow. We have the uh, Barnstable uh, Christmas Stroll tomorrow night from 4 to 6 p.m., and there is a road closure for Barnstable. Um, Route 6A will be closed from the uh, Barnstable um, Firehouse up to Old Jail Lane. Traffic will be rerouted through the county complex and back out through Old Jail Lane. And that will run till about 6 p.m. And then on Friday, it's the Osterville Stroll, and the entire Main Street in Osterville is closed down uh, from Bay Street down to uh, Wimpy's. Um, that whole area will be closed down. Traffic will be rerouted. And there will be multiple police officers down there um, directing the people through the detour, so there should not be a problem. And we, we've done this every year. And the Barnstable Village Stroll is tomorrow. To learn more, we talked with Joe Berlin. Andy from the Barnstable Village Civic Association. The village itself is a very small, compact area. So unlike many other villages or towns on Cape Cod, and so everything is within a very short distance. And we close down the streets, and all the businesses participate, as they do with the other events. And um, it's easy to control. Uh, and, and with the streets closed down, the streets are now pedestrian way. And we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that come to this stroll. Some of these people never come. They drive by or through the village, but never really spend any time. So the whole purpose of the events that we offer all year to bring people into this village so the businesses will improve and gain gain a business but also to make more people aware of who we are and what we do in this village that's really the key it's a it's an event for everybody and it's a fun time one thing we are doing this year just so people will know is the village association our group usually has a hot dog and hamburger stand right outside the barnstable market and for years we've been giving those that food away at no cost, and it cost us money. So we need, as a Bonsville Village Association, to raise funds so we can continue to offer the events we offer. All we, the income we have is just from the membership. The hot dogs and hamburgers will be at low cost, but all the proceeds will go to the Village Association so we can pay for these programs. We want everyone here, where it doesn't matter where they live, Come and enjoy it, have fun, and let's hope that Mother Nature yeah, provides us with good weather. That's the main thing. But it will be fun. It is, by the way, Wednesday, December 7th, and it starts at 6 o'clock to about 8. And we'll have music, we'll have carolers, all kinds of things going on. It'll be a lot of fun, and there'll be no traffic. People should remember that if they're driving, which they will, they should park up in the county complex. And the police will be here to direct them to park up in the county complex. So. They don't have to walk here. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable This Morning, weekdays at 8 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will chat with Town Manager Mark Ells. We'll talk with Finance Director Mark Milne, 
Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.